do do new 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 do do new new new. All right, do, first do, up on the new, big board. New, new. Yep, do do it's do, do, do do. This is a TNT three point two. Um, the three point two is backwards compatible with the three point one. I think the biggest change that occurred is I think one more pin is broken out in the bottom, and the regulator has been upgraded to be like a beefy. I think like 500 milliamp output regulator. People were, the, the previous 3.3 volt regulator was like, I think 100 milliamp something. And so when people tried to plug it into like a, you know, a Wi-Fi module, like an ESP8266, it was sad. And so um, he beefed it up and now it's just a big regulator. Otherwise it is backwards compatible. Yeah, it comes with a, the same type of card you've known to love and trust. Yeah. And uh, it's there. It's probably one of the best um, little microcontroller boards out there. It is fast. It's, you know, we use it for projects where we need yeah. the, the DMA. It's, it's kind of the basis for what became the Fade Candy. Uh, you know, yeah. if, you're, if you're already had Arduino experience and you want to take it to the next level, TNC's where it's at. Okay, next up. It's a UFL connector that's connected to a Wi-Fi antenna. This is a little um, mini Wi-Fi antenna, great for use with uh, our UFL Wi-Fi boards like um, the CC3000 and many future Wi-Fi boards that are not being discussed I bet, yet. I bet you're putting in some Wi-Fi boards in soon that would use this. I bet that's what's happening. Maybe, but you can also use it with ones that exist, like we have the CC3000 Shield. Um, so this will let you give it a little bit more gain than the chip antenna, um, and it's not big and clunky. So this is kind of an intermediary. Like you don't you don't want a little chip antenna, um, and you don't want those gigantic you know rubber duck antennas. Instead, you have um, like a UFL to little. Um, PCB. So it's flexible, you can fit in enclosure. Yeah. Next up. Um, now we're talking. Yeah, we've got some fun things here. So. It's flex matrix time. Yeah. Let's so, show the video of the flexi matrix. Yeah, this is cool. Okay. It's like great nails, too. So we have, we have had flexible matrices for NeoPixel, NeoPixel matrices. Now we have dot star matrices. So dot star LEDs are very similar to NeoPixels. They still have either the same shape. Um, five millimeters by five millimeters, and inside there's a chip that controls the LED, so you only have to kind of send it data once, it does the PWM for you. Um, these use two wires, not one, so you get data and clock. That means you don't have to be as careful about the clock timing. Also, the LEDs have much, much higher PWM, so there's not as much um, dithering. You can get dim colors, they look a little bit better. Um, great for when you have chips that don't have the NeoPixel timing or the NeoPixel library is imported to them. Um, or you just want like a higher quality um, uh, pixel with high, much higher refresh rate as well because you can clock these at like 8 megahertz or something. So I have the live demo here, I'm going to show it, but basically very similar to the video that you saw, just give me a second. Well, of course now it's... No, we have a video. Hold on. So this is the, the matrix. Okay, here you go. So yeah, this is, um, it's on a flexible um, uh, PCB backing, and this is the, I think the most fun one, it's 8x16. We also have a gigantic 16x16 and an itsy bitsy 8x8, and on the back you have two connectors, input and output, and you have an extra set of ground uh, wires if you need them. So the deal is, with the flexible matrix, and I tell these every time we introduce them, is while it is flexible, it's not meant for repeated flexing, and it's not meant for like intense flexing. So like what I'm doing here, that's kind of what we suggest. And like you flex it to a look, you know, a shape, and then you set it. Um, so it's good for like maybe wearables or stuff that might move, but it's not meant for like you're flexing it back and forth constantly because eventually it will crack the PCB material. It's not. It's not meant for. It's not silicone. It's not meant for continuous bending. So it's a warning. Uh, we don't offer refunds or replacements if you flex it and crack it. Okay. Um, so the other things that we have are kind of, um, you know, bigger versions. Um, yeah, this is the 16 by 16. Yeah, so we have a 16 by 16, which Ooh, is really nice. Huge. And yeah, each LED is individually addressable. We have an Arduino library, and it's very easy. Because it's just a BitBang SPI, it's very, very easy to port to any microcontroller. So especially if you're not using something with the NeoPixel library, this is like SPI. You literally just like clock out with the clock line and yeah. the data line what you want the colors to be, and they just do it. Yeah. Very easy. And um, just to show you some photos of it without it being bent and lit up, we have that as well. Yep. OK, um, next one, a longer one. Yeah, this is the first one I demoed. It's 8 by 32. Yeah. If I said 16, I'm wrong. It's 8 by 32. So it's the same number of pixels as 16 by 16, but just longer. This one I think would be fun for like scrolling messages and stuff. So, yeah. And it works with our graphics library, so it's easy to, to draw on it. Yeah. Okay. 
And uh, again, some photos of it in action and not, not in not action. action. <laughs> no, I know. I have to okay. show both. And next then, up. Uh, the next one is these little pixies. These are little, but they're powerful. These are, you know, if you like NeoPixels or dot stars, you're like, okay, well, you have these little 50, you know, 5 million or 5 million LEDs. You know, and they use about like 0.02 watts each. These are 3 watt LEDs. So these are mind blowingly bright LEDs, and they also have basically a chainable design. They don't use the NeoPixel protocol, they use um, UART serial. So you, you just send the data as, you know, uh, basically serial writes and you write the data. And um, I'll just hold this up just to show how incredibly bright they are. Um, these little pixels are, yeah, three watt LED on one side and then a microcontroller on the other. And then you can chain as many as you want. Just be aware that each LED can use three watts. It's up to an amp each. So if you're gonna power it, you need a really good, powerful, about four, four to five volt supply. But if you want extremely bright LEDs, um, in a small package, this is definitely for you. And this is designed by um, Itai Bensvi, who uh, has done a, a bunch of other stuff with like the Yo Yo processor. Um, and he kind of said, like, hey, like a year ago, he's like, oh, I have this project to make these smart LEDs. And I'm like, let's do it. And I think we kind of came up with the best and brightest, okay. literally, LED. And for like the price of normally what you get an LED, you don't need a buck converter and you don't need any special circuitry. It's all in one. You get five yeah. volts data. And your rocket. So even if you don't want to chain them, it's it's still the easiest way to get um, a ridiculously bright LED going. Yeah. So yeah. Let's see if I can blow this out. Yeah. Now we're talking. Spaceship's coming for you. I like it when all this comes together because you know I've never seen an electronic show live on the internet that shows all this stuff, working demos and stuff lit up. Anyways, I think it's cool. Yeah. And all these cool videos. Look at these cool of effects. It. It's like it's actually kind of messing with the camera because all the, the CCD is just like getting too activated. Yeah. That's neat. Okay. Okay. Um, so next up, we do have some other LEDs, and you wanted Unending to. Unending LEDs. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So these are RGBW LEDs. The red, green, blue, and then you're like, what is that weird like hemispherical like egg yolk thing? That's a yellow, uh, sorry, a, a yellow phosphor for a white LED. So these are basically NeoPixels, but they have white as well. And this allows you to get a very pure, clean white color. Um, if you've ever tried mixing red, green, blue LEDs together, um, you'll notice that you can't quite get a, a pure white. You know, you'll always get it and be kind of like a bluish, kind of off-white. Because these have a true white LED in them, they look fantastic. And the yeah. white LED is incredibly bright as well. So we have these in three different um, plastic colors. Sorry, two plastic colors and three color yeah. temperatures. So we have you know this white plastic with red, green, blue, uh, and then warm white, neutral white, and cool white. So I think this one's a neutral white. You can kind of get the reflection, you can tell. I mean, definitely when they're lit up, you can tell. The yeah. cool white is like a fluorescent. Uh, white color. This is the cool white because the yellow is a little lighter. You can kind of tell. Yeah. Um, so the white is more. You can see here the white is is cool color, it's like a fluorescent daylight color. Neutral is kind of a medium color, and then warm white is kind of candlelighty or yeah. incandescent. This is um, RGBW warm white, but it has a black plastic top. Yeah. So this might be good if you have like a black PCB and you want it. Just it just like it doesn't cost anything else. It's the same price. So. It just gets you a little bit more of a fade into the background effect if you have a black PCB that this is against. So again, you have the neutral white, and you can see it fade into this kind of natural white yeah. color. And then we have the cool white, which is like this bluish white effect. So we have six total versions. Yeah. Three with the black top, three with the white top, natural, cool, warm. And then you get them as a pack of 10 each, and they come in a strip. And the deal is, is that if you are using these, uh, you, you solder them onto a board as a 50-50 LED, we have them in our EagleCAD library. You do have to have an, a NeoPixel library that has added white support because you have to add that extra byte sent out because it's not just red, green, blue, it's yeah. red, green, blue, white, so there's an extra eight bits. The NeoPixel library that Adafruits has written supports it. I'm just letting you know if you're using somebody else's library, I can't control that. The Arduino library absolutely does work with it. You just, when you create the NeoPixel yeah. object, you just say RGBW. Yeah, good work. Uh, I'm really impressed with the selection, quality, and um, the entire range of LEDs that we now have. This, so, is like a, this is like an LED wonderland. Yeah, and I also like that, you know, sometimes aesthetics matter, 
And the fact that you have um, ones for black PCBs or specific things, a lot of people believe LED is art and circuit boards are art, so this is really good. Yeah, it's not the, the full thing isn't black, but it just it helps a little it's bit. It's close enough. Like, for example, we're probably going to have it's our closer. NeoPixel rings. They'll be remade with black because it's helpful. Yeah, a it's bit. cool. Yeah. Okay, um, so next up. Okay. This is a Simsys DEP adapter board from Armstart. Oh, can you um, click over to actually this photo? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Okay, because it's a three part, three piece set. You get the thing at the top, which is a JTAG 2x10, 0.1 millimeter, 0.1 inch to uh, 0 0.05 2 by 5 adapter. So it's an SWD JTAG adapter. And then below that, right here, is a Simsys DAP board. And I think it's based on the LPC 11U. 35. So it's a um, NXP processor Cortex chip, and it does Simsys DAP. So uh, if you're like using like an Arduino or an AVR, you're probably used to having like an AVR programmer, you know, a thing that you plug into that two by three connector, and it programs the AVR with that code. Or if you're using a PIC and you have like the PIC start, you have that five pin connector with like you know M clear and clock data ground, whatever. So if you're using um, Cortex processors, ARM Cortex processors, you've probably experienced or had to have a chance to use Simsys DAP. Simsys DAP is this kind of uh, overall Cortex, Simsys stands for something, basically it's a debugging and programming, I think that's what DAP stands for, debug and program interface. So this allows you to interface with like, I think every Cortex processor and um, program it direct from your um, ID using the, the programmer and also um, do step debugging using the debug tool for your chip. Um, I don't guarantee it works with every chip, but uh, if your chip needs Simsys DAP, and I believe every Cortex chip does, M0 and M3 at least, um, then this tool is great. It's a very fair price. Uh, you can also reprogram the chip. It comes with all sorts of code and stuff. But yeah, this is great. Uh, we're doing a lot more stuff with ARM Cortex processors, so this is handy. Yeah. So you get the adapter, the Simsys DAP board, and I think it you know uses the L NXP released basically example code for this chip for Simsys DAP. I'm just wondering that. Okay. All right, Lady Ada, we are almost at the end here. Okay. We now have a bunch of photo, video, audio, video adapters, and these are suggested by uh, Noah and Pedro, who do so many projects that connect to or use photo, video stuff. So this is a, a 3 8 inch to 1 quarter inch screw adapter. Basically lets you turn something that would normally take a 3 8, 3 8 inch screw and let it take a 1 quarter inch screw. Um, this is great for like tripods and photo adapters and it's like a tripod or something. Yeah. But what it's really handy for, what they use it for, is when they 3D print something and they want to be able to attach it to a tripod after it's done, like they have a camera, photo yeah. light or something, they, they 3D print and then they screw this in because it, it has big threads and it, so it grabs into the 3D print and that way they have a really strong mount for the yeah, quarter cool. inch. So they kind of use it as a, as a shim. Yeah. Um, but you know, you can also use an adapter. Okay, next up. This is a um, sh uh, hot shoe mount adapter from quarter inch. So if you have something that has a quarter inch screw on it, um, this has a hole in it that would accept a quarter inch screw and then it turns into like basically hot shoe. So if you have stuff that has a hot shoe mount, which is very true, like a lot of lights yeah. and monitors and, and things, they would normally snap into your camera hot shoe, but maybe you want to attach it to something else. This basically adapts yeah. Quarter inch to hot shoe. Okay, next up. This is the bottom of the pan tilt. So this is, for example, something that uses hot shoe. So this is a pan tilt adapter. Uh, normally, it's attached to the hot shoe of a camera, for example, here. And there's a little um, key on the bottom, on the side, and you turn it, and it makes it um, this like ball mount movable, and you can move it around. It basically allows you to attach something. It's the other way around. It's, it allows you to attach something that normally would use a quarter inch screw to a hot shoe mount. Okay, let's keep going. And it can move either way. Um, this is a quarter inch screw, which is like a basic photo screw used for attaching all sorts of stuff in, in photography and videography. Um, but what's nice about this is it has, not only can you use it with like a coin, but it has this little flip up thing that um, this little D that flips up. Um, it has a nice notch you can, so you can easily flip it. And then you can rotate the screw very easily. So like, you know, when, when you're kind of juggling like 15 cameras and lights and stuff, you can easily attach it using your hands. You don't need to get a coin or a screwdriver. Okay. Next up. Um, and then, oh, this is it. Uh, being, it that's it attached to something, I think. Yeah. Okay. I don't and then know. we it, have this additional screw. And then finally, this is a quarter inch to quarter inch adapter. This is something if you have a 
Whoop, can you go back one? Yeah, this photo. If you have something that takes quarter inch and you want to attach it to something that also takes a quarter inch, um, like you want to adapt between the two, um, which is pretty common because usually you, things don't have a sticky out part. So this takes two sticky in parts and lets you attach them together. Okay. That was a lot of stuff. Congratulations, Lady Ada. You got through new products. Yay. New, 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 new. Yeah. New, 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 All right. New, new, new. Um